All right, guys, I figured I was gonna have to dub over this. It is windy and hot in Nebraska today. Uh, let's talk about changing the binders. Uh, the, the type of change you're gonna need for hot shot, it's a G70 grade, uh, 5 sixteenths. A lot, I've heard a lot of people, and see, this is my opinion. All this stuff is my opinion. This is the way I do it. These are my preferences. There's hundreds of right ways to do it, just like there's hundreds of wrong ways. Uh, G70, 5 sixteenths, you don't have to buy 3 eighths. There's nothing that you're gonna chain down on Hot Shot, CDL or non, that you're going to need a 3 eighths grade chain on. N nothing. There, it's just, it's more weight, they're more expensive, and it's unnecessary. You can do everything you need to do with 5 sixteenths. I did a whole lot on normal semi-flatbed with 5 sixteenths. So, don't let anybody, oh, but, oh, but love buys me, they said. No, no, don't worry about it. 5 sixteenths will get you by. It, it'll be plenty, it's all you need. So. With that being said, uh, what kind of binders do you need? Snap binders? I personally hate snap binders. I don't like them at all. I like ratchet binders way better. I feel like I can get them as tight as I want to get them. I can over tighten them. Yeah, but you can over tighten a snap binder too. Uh, snap binders are are dangerous. Uh, they're they're hard to mess with. Uh, it, there's there's no fine tuning a snap binder either. A lot of people say, well, you can do the 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 half half link method and all it's it's too much just get a ratchet binder they're almost the same price at this point and they're a lot easier to mess with uh, i like the ones with the collapsible uh handles because they're easier to store they take up a lot less space whenever you can make them you know three inches wide instead of eight or ten with a handle so that that's my preference uh get yourself some some grade 70 5 16 20 foot chains and some ratchet binders. That's all you're gonna need. You can do everything you need to do with chains on these trucks with those two things. All right, chains and binders. Okay, the issue I was having on this load, the way that I had it here was that um, I actually had to set these up pulling away from each other at first, which, which basically made a cross in the center. Uh, the reason was is I, I really didn't need to go to the axles because this has park, these both have parking brakes on them. Uh, they're little trailers, but they, they do have parking brakes since I guess they weigh 40, 4,600 a piece. Um, since it does have suspension, of course, if you've hauled anything with suspension, you know that the tires are going to bounce, the suspension is going to bounce, whatever's on top is going to bounce. And what was happening is that these were bouncing and that parking brake right there should be straight out. Well, that chain from the other one was hitting it and knocking it off. So it kept releasing the parking brake. This was starting to crawl forward. This should actually be down just like that and uh the, the the chain that it's laying on actually when that starts bouncing just threw it right back up it's spring loaded so um that was the issue i was having and it was all because of the cross chain and all that and it had actually almost walked itself up about a foot so uh we can go ahead and change that up and i'm, I'm gonna have these pulling the inside i like having them pull to the inside anyway uh like i said i didn't even know uh, until these were loaded that these were going to get scrapped so another reason i had these pulling out was so that it wouldn't scratch the paint up but since that's not an issue now uh, we can do that so the first thing you want to make sure of is that your chain is straight no twists uh you want to make sure that it's as straight as you can possibly get it uh, the best securement is going to be on a straight chain uh, you'll start hearing cracks and pops and stuff if they're not if they're not straight all that's doing is untwisting and starting to become loose. That's all it's gonna end up being. You're gonna have to keep adjusting everything. Just make sure it's straight from the start and you usually won't have to adjust it again. You wanna anchor your ratchet against whatever it's pulling towards. Uh, you don't wanna have it out because it will eventually, especially bouncing, start walking itself forward and your chains are gonna get loose. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna set up uh, you always want the hook side facing up. You want to try to have your, uh, the basically the fat side down um, and the hook side up pointing towards you pulling into the chain. Um, you pretty much want to make it like a hand, uh, view it as a hand. You want it pulling at you with a chain in the hand, not your hand on the chain. Uh, so hook side, hook side up on these. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to try to find 
the smooth side of the chain there'll be a link or on every single link there's going to be a weld always hook to the smooth side don't hook to the weld And if you have a ratchet binder, put it in the neutral position and uh, grab your hook so it doesn't twist on you and uh, start tightening. It's having a little issue here. Uh, they, these chains are gonna get rusty, especially exposed to the weather, uh, I, which brings to lubrication. I like using the white lithium. It's not as runny as WD-40 and it, it doesn't collect as much dust. WD-40 is crazy. It, it, I mean, it, all it does is it's a dust collector. Uh, the white lithium kind of goes on more, it, it, it dries. It doesn't seem like WD-40 ever dries. So you can actually see in the top left corner, you can, you can see it start to compress the suspension. And then look at the tires too. You'll see the tires start to flex a little. And then once they start flexing, you know, that's plenty for that point. Then you go to the other side and start doing that. Repeat the same process. Uh, anchor against. Make sure that you hit the smooth side. Hook up. Start tightening it. That's it. Now you can see it's well away. Uh, even once I tighten the front one, it's not going to hit that anymore. Uh, the way that I secure my chains is I hook it. I hook the loose end onto an upward facing link, and then I just wrap the excess around. I don't use bungee cords. I don't use zip ties. I, I mean, it's, there's no sense in it. That could be wrong to some people. Works for me. Like I said, make sure hooks up. Chain in the hand, not hand over the chain. Up against anchor point, up against anchor point, chain, hook up. Now we'll go around the other side and show the attachment. Uh, always go under, uh, two, two points of contact, go under a spool, hook into a box from the opposite end of the spool. To the other side, into the box from a spool that way you're not putting too much stress on the on the stake pockets so that's it guys that's all there is to it for me uh there there may be some comments down below on how i uh secure the other end uh, i usually i always go under a spool and into the box uh never go around the box never go around the stake pocket go to go to the opposite side of the spool that you're coming from uh there there there's a lot of things that you'll learn doing this on your own uh there's no real like I said, there's hundreds of right ways to do this. There's hundreds of wrong ways to do this. Uh, I know what works for me. I've done it this way for 11 years now. I've broken one chain and that was my fault. Uh, that goes back to the twists. Make sure you get your twists out of your chains. I've broken one chain in 11 years. I've never broken a stake pocket. I've never bent a stake pocket. This is what works for me. So it could obviously work for you. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about the method that I use, maybe a method that you use. I'm not opposed to learning other things. I've seen a lot of wrong. I've seen a lot of other things that work. But like I said, this works for me. Uh, until it doesn't, I don't see any reason to change it. Um, so that's it, guys. We'll see you next time.